Well, we are finally here. I've got to admit it, I am really pumped up. I needed a new challenge after so many years in this game. When you asked me to be your personal manager, I didn't need to think twice. With my advice and your talent, we are destined for the big time. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First of all, I need your details to sign up for the World Championship. Like my old mechanic always said, if you want to race motorbikes, first of all, you need a motorbike. Just tell me which manufacturer you want and I'll take care of the rest. We'll take a 450 and a 250. Ah, I see we have the same taste. Great choice. Their bikes are top quality. Now all we have to do is create our team. We need a spectacular name, a striking logo, and a good team manager. He'll be managing your custom team, updating your objectives and results. And uh, you also need to choose a photo to link to my emails. Please try and do me justice. We're nearly finished, but I've got a few motocross videos which could help you out if you want to learn from the champs. Want to watch them now? For a good start, you need quick reflexes and coordination. Before the start, press the clutch, put your weight on the front and accelerate until the limit of threshold. As soon as the gates go down, let go of the clutch and give it full gas. If you manage it at just the right time, you have a good chance of pulling off a whole shot. The clutch can be useful if you find yourself jostling for positions in the middle of a race. On slow corners or hairpins, you need power and thrust to get going again. In these cases, hit the clutch and let it go immediately after accelerating. Once again, coordination is everything, but with a bit of practice, I'm sure you'll master this technique. There are many ways of managing speed on corners, and you need different approaches according to the effect you want to achieve. On wide bends, just use the engine brake. If you calculate the distance well and arrive to the curb prepared, you shouldn't have to worry about the brakes. If you want powerful braking instead, use the front brake. It'll have an immediate effect with a short stopping distance. 
but don't overdo it. Only the best riders can do this without ending up face down in the mud. The rear brake is really useful when you want to combine braking and turning. Use it on hairpin bends or for tight, precise trajectories. When you accelerate, think about what kind of bend lies in weight and what kind of trajectory you want to set. On broad corners, keep straight and turn by dabbing the accelerator. If the corner is banked, lean into it, taking advantage of the inner side. This will enable you to leave the corner much faster and with the gas open. In both cases, remember that you can tighten the line of the curve even more by moving your weight to the front wheel. Never underestimate the importance of a good trajectory. If you want to be fast, this is where you need to start. The shape and position of a jump on the track can make a big difference when you're riding. Experience and talent will show you how to handle them, but I can give you a few pieces of precious advice in the meantime. When you face individual bumps or those followed by a corner, stop accelerating just before you reach the top. Your trajectory will be lower and you will lose less time flying. If you have to tackle one or more jumps instead, you'll need a decidedly longer trajectory. In this case, tackle the ramp by moving your weight to the back. This maneuver, combined with a good dose of gas, will give you the best traction for literally taking flight. A series of bumps are also handled by putting your weight to the back. The front wheel won't get in your way and will allow the rear shock absorber to absorb all the ground's irregularities. Perfect control of the flying bike will help you land well, without taking unnecessary risks. So, the best way to land from the jump is to keep the wheels as parallel as possible to the ground. When you're flying, you've got to move your weight forwards or backwards on the bike to land with the most traction. Careful not to overdo it, or you'll find yourself on the floor before you know what's happened. You can also use the accelerator and rear brake to steer the bike while flying. Using the former, the bike will point upwards. Using the latter, it will point downwards. One technique is no better than the other, and only practice will tell you which is more efficient for your riding style. If you want to finish the scrub as well as possible, technique and timing are fundamental. This technique is frequently used by professional riders and gives you a lower trajectory when compared to a simple jump. The aim is always the same, saving as much time as possible when flying. OK, to perform a scrub, the bike and rider have to be going in different directions, but right before the wheels leave the ground. As you might guess, timing is essential. Move too early and you risk falling. Do it too late and you won't finish the scrub. You can't do a scrub on all jumps. Using it on small jumps or those that are very close is pointless, even risky. Study the tracks and look for the best points to scrub. Your times will visibly improve. Okay, now we're fully set. Let's do it. Okay, now it's time to get serious. Your first World Championship tasks will be two wildcard races with your custom team. The team is ready and we all believe in you, but we have to sign with a sponsor to compete in the championship. This is who has come forward so far.
good. I can see you've got the right idea. Remember that all sponsors expect a minimum position in every race. Respect this, and I won't have problems keeping them on board. A true champion gets things done off the track as well. Here's everything you need to follow the season. Test the bikes and manage public relations. By the way, keep an eye on the mag. It might be talking about us soon.
occupation. Back to it, Luke, with you! 